I've got the top 10 hottest pickups of the week in fantasy basketball coming up next on Beat the Odds. Don't go anywhere. Hello, sports fans, and welcome back to another episode of Beat the Odds. We're going to go over the top 10 hottest pickups ahead of week six in fantasy basketball. Now, if you like the sound of that, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell so that way you don't miss an episode. You can also follow me on TikTok. Now, I want to thank my community for casting 369 total votes, which helped me create this list. Did you miss your chance to vote? Make sure to keep an eye out for more polls coming out later this week. Do you have a burning fantasy basketball question? Ask me on Q. Go to askmeonq.com slash beat the odds dash NBA, submit your question, and for a small fee, I will personalize your response and send it to your email. It's super easy to do, and it's a great way to get fantasy basketball advice while also supporting this channel. Now let's get right to the list here. At number 10, we have Donovan Klingen. Meet the Walker Kessler of the 2024 draft class. Donovan Klingen's playing time is sandwiched between two capable starting caliber centers, that of course being Aiton and Robert Williams. Now Aiton doesn't have a return date yet, so you can safely run Klingen and his rebounding and shot blocking prowess for likely another week without worry. Moving over to number 9, we have Santi Aldama. Aldama's ability to put up numbers is not as dependent on whether he starts as some other players. His playmaking ability is a nice touch to his well-rounded game. With Zach Eady sidelined for the foreseeable future, the Spaniard should be a safe bet to continue to collect 25 minutes a night, which is more than enough minutes to make an impact on fantasy squads. Let's go to number 8, we have Shaden Sharp. Now I'll admit, having Sharp as my number one pickup last week didn't quite pan out how I had hoped, but the third year guard is still poised to be a major part of the Portland offense this year. Outside of scoring, we have yet to see any real consistent counting stat that we can rely on. But if he returns to the five rebounds and three assists a game like he was doing last season, I'll be very satisfied. Let's move on to number seven, we have Christian Braun. Now Braun has been on my radar since the start of the season where he was appointed the starter and the fifth option on offense. While his shot blocking has taken a dip over the last couple of weeks, Braun has still been a pest on defense, averaging almost two steals per game. He's still available in over 40% of Yahoo leagues, so I'd check the waivers just in case. Let's go to number six. We have Brandon Boston Jr. Now, Boston is perfectly suited for points leagues as he has been one of the main facilitators on this team. But of course, once CJ McCollum and DeJounte Murray return from injury, Boston's usage will certainly diminish, but I would guess that we're a long while out before we have to worry about that. For now, enjoy a player who can get you 15 points, 5 rebounds, and 5 assists in 30 plus minutes per night. Let's go to number 5, we have Jaden McDaniels. McDaniels logged 42 minutes in a 5 point loss to the Toronto Raptors on Thursday night. He posted a season high 22 points and 7 rebounds, while being his usual active self on defense logging 2 steals. McDaniels has one of the best floors in this top 10 list, as his role in the starting 5 is very secure. Now let's go to number four. We have Jordan Clarkson. Clarkson was near the top of the vote getters this week, but I had to bump him a few spots down my list as I'm unsure if he's fully recovered from his plantar fasciitis. In the seven games before his four-point clunker in his return to the lineup, he had been a consistent source of scoring, posting anywhere between 16 and 21 points, three to five rebounds, and had averaged almost four assists. Now let's go to number three. We have Tari Eason. Amen Thompson got more attention from fantasy basketball managers with his contributions across all categories of key position eligibility, but Easton has been as effective, if not more, with his elite defensive stats. His per 36 looked like this, 19.2 points, 10.1 rebounds, 1.9 assists, 3.5 steals, and 1.7 blocks. You don't want to face that if Easton ever breaks into the starting lineup. Moving on to number two, you've got Andrew Wiggins. Is Wiggins officially back? It seems so. With Coach Kerr limiting his players to under 30 minutes per game, we've started to see Wiggins put together some full lines, something that was missing from his fantasy profile over the last couple of years. As arguably the current number two option on offense and on a team that seems playoff bound, I don't see Wiggins' role changing this season. And finally, at number one, we have Jared McCain. McCain's rise to the number one spot this week is more a function of what is happening around him than his actual talents. With Joel Embiid, Tyrese Maxey, and Paul George not able to consistently play regular minutes, it has thrusted McCain into a feature role in this offense. McCain has posted seven straight games with 20 points, and he should continue to do so until all three stars return to the court. And that's going to do it here for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like on the video, and of course, subscribe to the channel for more content like this. I'm going to sign off for now, but I will catch you guys on the next episode.